Thank you so much. Great intro, man. That was really nice. Thank you. Appreciate that. So, kick out with number 10 on the top 10 20 list. Ooh, this is actually one of my favorites from Duke Roo from the Beatles Melody Show Tape. 8675309. Oh, yes. Actually, this one of your. This one of my favorites. I think this one came out as a record, did it? with a one-on-one. Alright, one-on-one, yeah. This is one of my favorites. Um, yeah, this don't ask me why I said one of my favorites, but I remember every time you used to go live back then, you always played it. Johnny Jig Giacomo. He was in so, the uh, Calendar Head and Night Showcase also. Yeah. But uh, it's a good fat song. It's got a good rhythm. You know, um, it, it includes the audience as well. Yes. Uh, the bats, you know, it tells everybody in the back you know, to join in with him and join in with the band. And start clapping your hands, stomping your feet. Yeah. Uh, it really just gets the crowd going. Right. Uh, kicking up with number eight. Hmm. Um. Picking up with number eight, I had to say the ballroom dancing. Ballroom dancing is a good. It actually came from the Senior Citizens show tape. The song did kind of bob around with Senior Citizens much, I think, but it was a good Beach Press song to go dance to. It's opened up with Fats playing the classic music, and then Antioch shows up and tells Fats about his own classic music that he wants to play. And you know, Ralph disagrees that disco is the best music there. Is. Oh, 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 and I gotta say, disco is better. Yeah, but I mean, Ralph was pretty wrong on that. One. Yeah, Ralph definitely. Yeah, that's true. But you know, it wasn't that bad. You know, it wasn't that great, but. <laughs> But yeah, Ballroom Dance was That's really true. good. But I like Beach Bear and Dudes harmonized together in this whole song. S one. That is true. They do create a good sound. Now, kicking things off with number seven, is that right? Yep, number, number seven. seven. Alright, number seven. Spaceman by Duke. Oh yes. That highly reminds me of Rocket Man. <laughs> of course, because of the name by Old John. But, uh, nowhere near the same type of song. But, it's got a really good drum beat to it. It's really rock and roll each. It's really loud. It's really vibrant. You know, it, 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 it's a good 80s one, I believe. It was produced in 84 or 83. 82. The Christmas, Christmas 83 show. Yes. 82, but, 83? Um, somewhere, somewhere like that. It is a, uh, it's a great set. It's pretty much, it should be in the if they ever make a rock and mm-hmm. yeah. number six, speaking of the holidays, I have to say Disco Christmas is my favorite. Disco Christmas is now, I know a lot of fans would actually would think about this one, but here's a good story behind it about Disco Christmas. Oh, yeah. um, you know, 
as you guys heard from Aaron's views, uh, tour videos and uh, like stuff on showskeys.com, a lot of people are like hearing the mistake, and I, I think I heard this like so many times, and I do not actually hear this no more. There's something with Missy saying, "Here comes Santa Claus, here comes Santa Claus, F and Santa Claus Slay." But the reason was when the programming was doing around that time, the drums were speaking. Well, when I was playing in a high pitch, so basically you guys hear Missy saying. Here comes Santa Claus, here comes Santa Claus, walking down Santa Claus sleigh. But, the folks that... And you know, if, if, you know, if you think about it when you're listening to that show, especially on the record, um, you can make it out, but it's not as clear you know, as you would think it would be. Right. Uh, you can clearly hear, say, here comes Santa Claus, here comes Santa Claus, walking down Santa Claus lane. Right. You can, you can hear the saying that but people who ever thought that wow <laughs> just wow yeah and another thing they had to do because of that they stopped production of that record early because of all of those complaints and i was gonna say that to yes the extent of burning them all yes i was so, gonna say that thank you for i was yeah, I was gonna say that the folks at Showbiz got so mad about it that they literally took all the records out of the stores and literally burned it Yes, but you can actually. If you got one, you're lucky. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, I was gonna say you got a, you got that record, and yeah, you're definitely lucky. But be glad there's also audio of it too that we can actually listen to. That's true. But it was kind of shocking to see that you know the folks at Showbiz thinking, oh yeah, the characters are cursing, and then Aaron actually made Missy actually curse and said a bad word. But you know, it's like I had no problem about it. You know, I don't have a problem with this whole Christmas. It's a good Christmas song. Yeah, definitely true, true, true. Uh, yeah, you kick out with number five. <laughs> All right, number five. This one here is a long one, if not the longest Rock of Fire Explosion show to exist to date. New Year's 1988. That's hey, we did that actually in the uh, top. It contains songs, you know, Louie Louie, I Feel Fine, Moni Moni, I Think We're Alone Now, I Ain't Got You, which is an original. That's my mic. Yep. Uh, shout, feeling alright, tempted after midnight. You know, all of those were really well put together. Um, and as Billy Bob stated, they had no time to practice. Yeah, and a yes. fun fact about that one, that is true. They did not have time to practice those. Not they making that up. Whatever came out. Yeah. So. Like, you know, it's like, it's like Muppets tonight. Just put anything you got and then make it something. Exactly. And also, we mentioned that in our top 10 Rockfire uh, Rock Show taste, so you guys want to check that out. Link in the description. Fun fact, also, we were supposed to play Rockfire Fan in there, but I was like, you know, I've always thought that, you know, I never had time to really got you back into the talk shows, because you always never do respond back sometimes, and, you know, I just, um... It's because I tend to get busy sometimes. Yeah, you always get busy, and then it's like... get me down, I'm all for it. Yeah, I'm glad you said that too, and I was like, okay, let's just do this thing tonight and get this out the way, you know, so I won't be yeah. right. But, um, yeah, you know, New Year's 19, New Year's 88 is a good Rockefeller show tape. Longest one, like you said, they have put anything, they just put whatever they got, put it in there, you know, bang, boom. You got, you got a show tape, look at you. Yeah, exactly. It's like, you know, it's like I said, it's like Muppets Tonight. Put anything in there and make it perfect just for what the heck reason. It's your last minute thing. And true, they did not know what to put, so they just put anything in there. Like, bang. Exactly. They just started recording and they said whatever. Right. It's not like New Year's 82, but it's different, you know. New Year's 82, they reuse a lot of things in yeah. that one. Which, I mean, that's alright, but... I'm glad that they added special intros and everything, and other short little songs like Earl Lang Syme and everything, you know. But, yeah. um, especially with New Year's 88, that that was all raw. That was all raw cuts. They, they just did really well on performing those songs, and they did what was popular at the time. And they also included some that they wrote previously. Right. Um... Uh, kick out with number four. I don't know if I can. Uh, I'm, I think I want to consider that's a rock and fire one too. Uh, we haven't talked about this one. The last one, the Hannah, uh, uh, the Hannah Banana show tape. Those are rare. Yeah, definitely rare. I was gonna say Hannah Barbera, but uh, for those who don't know who Hannah Banana is, she 
Um, God. She's a retrofit of Missy that was in the UK. I forgot. I don't know the year, actually. But it's her. Uh, I want to say it was 2000s-ish. Like, early 2000s. The footage looked like it, to be honest. Yeah, I think it did look like the early 2000s. But, uh, oh, in fact, they also made that into a restaurant. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, also. But it got closed down because, like, uh, I think, like, food poisoning or something like that. I'm not, like, 100% sure. Yeah, I remember hearing something about glass in the pizza or something. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not too sure. But the voice actor was a British accent. Uh, British. She was a Welsh monkey. Yes, a Welsh monkey. Oh, <laughs> yeah. They did, um, they did songs like, you know, they did, like, old songs they did, like, the Monkeys, the Beatles, um... A rendition of the Happy Birthday, a Christmas melody. You know, it was pretty. They did happy together, didn't they? Oh yeah, they did happy together. Thank you for saying that too. Um. Yeah, because that's the main one that I remember sticking out from all. It is um playing on radio showbiz. I think some YouTubers do have the audio and like actually have it, but there's no footage of Hanna Barbera, of like her programming and stuff. But I don't know if Aaron still has her today. That's the thing. Knowing that he had all kinds of stuff in that warehouse, you never know. You're right. So hopefully he can probably but, get her back to work. But she's like one of the rarest characters, actually. Yeah. Oh, uh, she really is. Um, it's rare to see anything from her, really. There's only so much footage of her in the restaurant itself. Um, barely any. Right. But, on the, the commercials. Stuff that there is, it's it's nice quality, and you can really see how she is. So. Yeah. All right. Number three. Kicking things off, with number three. I am gonna have to say this old man from the show selectors. Um, it may be really short coming in at a minute and fifty seconds, but it is a cut from Kids Two show if I'm right kids too yeah and well, that's a cyber star show in 88 but this old man involves two of the stages if I'm right Billy Bob's and center stage mm-hmm. uh, Rolf doesn't come in until you know like later in the cyber star one. but um it's a good kids one or kiddie one as they called it the kiddie shows this also but, featured a time when Aaron's four year old daughter Dawn was the backstage announcer yeah, that's also true. That's also true. They did that with three little fish as well. That's also a show selection. Right. Um, I kick out with number two. Hmm. No, kick out with number two. I like the one with, um. Oh, a whole new world. Yeah, a whole new world. Yes. Well, that one is actually really well put together. They did that based around the time that Aladdin was released. Yep. They, like I said, they do certain songs to keep up with the current time. You know, they did songs that were popular in 84, 85, 86, you know, they did stuff like that. Right. But the whole new world was popular in the 90s when Aladdin was released. Mm hmm. And. It was very well received, if I say so myself. Right. And coming in at number one. All right. This one is one of my favorites, if not my top favorite. It is Crocodile Rock. Oh yes. That, yes, that is a show selector show and gold collection. Um, that one truly deserves more love. Duke did a great rendition of it. Um, the band joining in and Looney doing the la 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 and such was, yeah. <laughs> that was classic yeah you know, definitely they should have done that with more shows which they did they did it with a few like the Your Ears Hang Low um, mm -hmm. but Crocodile Rock they overall did an amazing cover the drums were really well the programming was really nice they programmed till the end till the music stopped right that was um, cool actually but Crocodile Rock is definitely a good number one choice. Right. 
I liked it. And it, it was also was, um, um, they also did for a karaoke, too. They also did, yes. They did a lot of the shows, like the shows for karaoke. So, yeah, so, um, thank guys once again for joining in for, um, our top 20 part 2 of the Rockfire Showcase. Thank you again, Rockfire fan, for joining in also. Oh, no problem. I'm glad to do it anytime. And, uh, yeah, you guys stay tuned for more topics because we got, like, two more down, you know. Well, two more down, I would say. But thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to his channel and spread some more Rockfire reactions. Until then, I'll see you guys next time for another episode of the Chucky Talk Show.